Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com, and welcome to another episode of The John Morris Show. And in this episode, I'm going to be answering another one of your questions that I received via private message. And the question is, am I too old to learn how to code? So I'm going to dive in to the answer to this question. I'm going to give you a few tips for how you can leverage your age. I'm also going to cover some of the disadvantages that you have and how you can overcome them. So if you've ever wondered the answer to this question, be sure to stay tuned. This episode is sponsored by the Complete Web Developers Course taught by Rob Percival on Udemy.com. Now what I love about this course is first how comprehensive it is. It's 235 lectures on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery, Bootstrap, WordPress, PHP, MySQL, APIs, and mobile apps. I mean, it's ridiculous. Second, I love how good of a teacher Rob is. As a former school teacher, Rob knows how to explain complex concepts in ways anyone can understand. And of course, the cool thing is I talked Rob into giving my audience an 85% discount on the course. So check the description of this video for a special link that contains a coupon code good for 85% off of the Complete Web Developers course by Rob Percival. Click that link and you'll be all set for the discount. Now, onto the episode. All right, so the question I received is, I'm a 58-year-old man. Like I said, I'm in the movie industry. I'm currently a digital imaging technician, and before that I was a broadcast engineer. I'm trying to change careers since cameras have become more self-sustained, and my position is going away as a technician. I've been learning web development for a little less than a year. My question is, do you think I have a shot at doing web developing full-time, or do you think my age is going to be an issue? So to answer the basic question, are you too old? The answer is no. Given all of the training and everything that's available to help you get where you want to go, you can definitely do it uh, in the amount of time that, that you may have left to to be able to do what you want to do. There's no, you know, there's no issue in that regard. There's plenty available to get you where you want to go. That said... You also have to be realistic and realize that there are some disadvantages in in time and in the way people may look at uh, someone's age, especially in web development when all the technology is so brand new. So there's a couple things that I believe that you need to do in order to get you down the path faster. So the first thing is, is you really need to focus More so than probably someone else, you need to focus on finding your niche because you really don't have a lot of time to mess around going a year down one path, it not working out, going a year down another path, that not working out, going a year down another path. You don't have time to be doing that, that someone who's maybe 20 or 25 has time, a little more time to do that. So you need to focus on figuring out what your niche is and what you want to do, what product or what result you want to deliver for the foreseeable future. You need to spend some time doing that. Now, the way the the simple three-step process that I tell people to go through is what do you love to do in relation to coding? So what are the what are the things, the skills that you really enjoy? Not the There seems to sometimes be this illusion that everything about coding is awesome. That's not true. There's plenty of things that I hate about coding. There's plenty of things that coders I know hate, and they're all a little bit different. We all have things that we hate. We all have things that we enjoy. So you need to figure out what you enjoy most, and you need to spend a lot of time really thinking about that and figuring it out because, again, you don't have time to, to, to mess around. So, again... What do you love to do? What are you good at? Or what are you willing to be good or great at? So what are you willing to invest the time to be truly great at so that you can outcompete the people you're going to need to in order to get a job, get clients, sell your app, whatever it is that you end up doing, whatever career path you end up pursuing. So uh, what are, what are you willing to be great at? Finally, what are others willing to pay you for? So you need to do 
make sure that you do do some research and figure out if what you love to do and what you're great at is also something that people will pay you for because otherwise it's just a hobby and it's fine to have hobbies but not if you're trying to make a career out of it so again focus on finding your niche next is don't be afraid to find great teachers to fast track your learning you can't fall for the trap of you need to figure everything out everything out on your own a younger developer can maybe get away with that because they have a little more time to realize that that's dumb and to then get into actually finding someone to help them you have to understand when i say don't do that don't do that uh, you need to be willing to find great teachers that can help you fast track your learning because they can teach you things faster than you could probably learn it on your own you don't have the time to be spending three hours on google finding a tutorial for the skill that you need you need to find a source of information that you believe is reliable and you need to really ride that source. So if it's lynda.com, if it's Udemy, if it's johnmorrisonline.com, whatever it is, you need to find a source or sources and you really need to go all out with everything that they have that you need to be able to learn the skills for the niche that you've chosen. Third, I think you need to put yourself out there now or sooner rather than later. And the reason that is, is because I know with me, as I've aged, I've learned that sometimes it's easy to justify staying comfortable when you've created a comfortable life for yourself and, you know, things are going well and it, it can be easy to not take a risk or to not, you know, put yourself out there uh, because, you know, it, you're comfortable and it's just easy to stay that way. So if you really want to go after this and you really want to make this switch, then you need to get over that. And the only way that you can get over that is to by putting yourself out there is by actually doing it. So if that means taking a client, then take a client. If that means putting your code up on GitHub and sending a bunch of people to it so you expose yourself to that, then do that. If it means contributing to uh, a, an open source project, then do that. Whatever way that you can start putting your code in front of other people or putting your art, whatever it is that you're doing, if you're doing designing more or whatever, the more you can get it in front of other people and start getting the feedback, start getting the scrutiny, start putting yourself out there to get over that fear of putting yourself out there, you need to do that. And you really need to focus on that more than probably someone who's young who feels like they have something to prove, is trying to take on the world, hasn't already proven themselves in some sort of career, it can be a little bit more difficult for you to do that. I know with as I've aged, I've had to deal with that as well and had to, at times, go back and be willing to put myself out there in different ways. I mean, this podcast, frankly, is me putting myself out in a very different way than I have before. So it's a risk for me. And it was difficult for me to get myself at a point where I could do that. So again, you need to, to, to do that and get yourself put out there. So those are some of the disadvantages and how you can overcome them. However, you also have some advantages. The first one is that you know who you are more. You've lived a, a few decades. You've had a career. You maybe even had a family. So you have a better idea of who you are and so the questions that you need to answer you probably have a better idea of what those answers are you can probably answer them a little more quickly you could probably answer the question of what do I love to do a little more quickly you can probably the answer answer the question of am I ready to put myself out there a little more quickly uh, because you've got experience you've got some time under your belt so you know who you are more and that can help you answer some of the tough questions you'll need to answer a little bit easier. So use that and and don't get caught in. Don't let that be something that holds you back. Don't take as long as some 20-year-old would to answer those questions. That's a mistake and that'll uh, uh, hold you back. Next, you're probably more responsible. Judging by your question, you've had a successful career. You know what it takes to be an effective worker. You know what it takes to be productive. You know what it takes to have a career and deliver when it counts to people who matter. That's an advantage. Bring that work ethic. 
that sense of responsibility, that sense of being able to grind and know when it's crunch time, bring that to coding. Use that to your advantage as much as you can. Third, again, judging by what your question said and just you know, based off having been around a little bit longer, uh, the assumption you probably have a little bit more money than someone who is maybe 20, fresh out of college, etc. So you can leverage that money. The the leverage come can come from three places: time, money, or effort. So if you don't have a bunch of money, then you end up leveraging your time and your effort, and that's what you see a lot of young coders doing. Don't fall into the trap of doing what they're doing. You, if you have money, leverage it to cut down on the amount of time that you have to spend to learn and, frankly, the amount of effort. And again, that's in the form of being willing to spend a few bucks on a course or going to a boot camp or some sort of training. Being willing to do that so that you can learn what you need to learn faster. Uh, so don't be afraid to to use that advantage that you have of of likely having more money. Now, if you don't for whatever reason, that that's fine. Just know that you're gonna have to really buckle down when it comes to time and effort. So those are the advantages and disadvantages. Finally, I want to cover what maybe probably more of the question that you're asking when you say is age going to be a problem, which is is age going to be a problem when someone's looking to hire me, whether that's for a job, uh, you know, as uh, a client or whatever route you end up going. Is age going to be a problem when they hire me? And it's only going to be a problem if you let it. So your age can actually be used as an advantage. And let me give you two scenarios and how I would position myself in each one so you can get maybe an idea of the contrast between the two. So if I were a young college student fresh out of college and I were applying at a position, knowing that the employer is going to be looking at me and saying, you know, this is someone who's fresh out of college. You know, do they know this is what they want to do? You know, is this someone who's risky, etc. All the questions that you might have of someone who is young, then the way I would position it is I would say, hey, look, I know I'm young, I'm fresh out of college, but there are some advantages to that. One of the advantages is that I'm young and I'm hungry. I haven't proven myself and I want to prove myself and I want to prove myself with your company or I want to prove myself by working on your project and delivering over the top. Uh, I'm also, like I said, fresh out of college. I've learned all the latest techniques. I know all the latest tricks. You know, I know everything. I'm up to speed on everything. I'm not some, you know, uh, old season coder who ha- has uh, ghosts of how code was done from 20 years ago. You know, I know the latest, freshest techniques and, you know, I can implement those for you. I'm also not someone who's set in their ways, so I'm not going to be difficult to work with because I haven't developed those patterns to, to be set in my ways. I'm going to be open-minded. I'm going to be willing to listen, be willing to learn, and be able to adjust myself to be able to produce better for you. So there's a lot of advantages to uh, to me being young. So if I were young, that's how I would position myself, or that's part of how I would position myself, depending on you know what I was doing. On the flip side, if you're older, then... You can also position that and use that as an advantage. So you can say, hey, look, I'm not some fresh young buck out of college who doesn't know what they want. I'm not someone that you're going to have to worry about two weeks from now is going to decide that coding isn't for them and they give it up and go somewhere else and now you're stuck. I'm also not someone who you know doesn't know how to produce. I've had a whole nother career of producing in a technical field. So I know how to deliver, and I know how to deliver in the crunch time. I know how to deliver when it matters on the projects that are important because I've done it for decades now in my other career. I also know how to be efficient. I've set up systems and processes. I've been an efficient worker for a number of years. I I wouldn't have had that career as long as I did if I hadn't been. And so I know how to be an efficient and effective worker who can deliver day after day after day after day. And frankly, you know, I'm also going to be more loyal than someone who's younger. I'm not looking to necessarily move up 
super far in some ladder and and bounce around from job to job in order to prove my position you know i just want to uh i want to do coding and until i retire or for the rest of my life whatever and i'm not someone who has a lot of time to bounce around from company to company to company so you know if you hire me or you hire me to work on your project i'm going to be uh loyal and you don't have to worry about me me bouncing around and leaving okay so again for your particular situation you could look at all of that and figure out what you would need to say in order for it to make sense for you but those are two very different ways that you can use two very different situations to your advantage and so you always want to make sure that when you're talking about things uh, and and talking to someone to hire you that you're positioning yourself uh, your position, you, you're positioning your scenario to your advantage. Don't don't go in there with the mindset of oh I'm old, you know they may not want me, and then talk about all the negative things. <laughs> it's funny I say this all the time with uh, selling houses. I just experiences in my life I've happened to have been a part of a number of situations where. I was able to see an owner selling their own house or trying to rent their own house. And the reason that we have realtors <laughs> is because owners, when they try to sell their own house, 99% of them, when they walk through the house with a prospective buyer or sp prospective renter, go through and are so nervous about all the things that are wrong that they tell that buyer or that renter, everything that's wrong. And then they try to justify it. And it's a horrible <laughs> approach to take because most of those things that buyer or renter probably never would have even noticed or wouldn't have been that big of a deal. Whereas when you have a realtor who's a professional and they go through the house, they go through the house and they point out all of the features of the house and how they, they relate to what they know about the client and how that uh, the those features are going to benefit them. And they only talk about the problems that the client brings up because they see those as objections. And when the client brings up those objections, then they try to answer them as best they can. But they don't go around the house talking about all of the bad things. So you need to sell yourself like a realtor would sell your house. Don't go, don't go in there and talk about all of the bad things. Go in there and put your best foot forward. Talk about all the advantages and only answer the objections that whoever's hiring you or talking to you brings up themselves. Don't bring them up for them. Now you need to think ahead what they might, what they might say and you need to have answers ready. But by God, don't go in there and <laughs> bring them up for them. Make them bring them up, and when they do, have a good answer for them. All right, so the answer to your question is no, you're not too old to learn how to code <laughs> to keep to, to get to the point. All right, so if you have a question for me, you can head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash Cora. Ask your question on Cora and invite me to answer it, and I'll try to get on the show. You can also tweet me at JP Morris, and I will try to answer it there. And you can send me a private message over on facebook.com slash johnmorrisonline. If you like this episode, be sure to like it so they know that this is the kind of content that you're after. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe so they get access to all the latest podcast episodes, tutorials, and everything that I release here. Finally, if you haven't yet, head on over to johnmorrisonline.com and download my free seven strategies to turn your code into cash cheat sheet where I'm going to show you seven different ways that you can monetize your coding skills. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you next time.